welcome back yay 1k subs um yeah i'm not really good with like emotions and that like you can't really hear it in my voice but i'm actually really hyped but i did promise you that naruto video so like people are like fucking bullet you lied to me where the fuck is a 1k special naruto video and i'll tell you where it is like i'm gonna make it right but i'm waiting for this new boruto chapter to drop because like i have a feeling naruto is gonna do some like crazy shit and here's another reason for you guys to like sub because i've literally gone out of my way to literally get novels that are literally written in japanese right so kanji and i literally have to go through it and translate it and surprisingly you've actually found really good stuff if you want to see this for like other characters maybe not like naruto related characters maybe like bleach and stuff i'll do that too but i do need the subs don't really want to get off topic or anything right i'm doing a meliodas video so this is my first seven deadly sins video this was highly requested so i kind of had to do it and if i had to be completely honest there aren't that many like videos for meliodas explaining how strong he is so if you want to get a good comprehensive scale this is a video to watch I'll be going over significant versions of Meliodas. So that will be Meliodas in season 1, 2, 3, and also covering the manga. <laughs> okay, I bet none of you are here to actually see how strong he is in like that short anime. You probably have a basic idea of how strong he is. Most of you probably want to know how strong he currently is in the manga, because not a lot of people actually know about that. So I will be quickly skimming over the actual anime, and mainly be talking about what happens in the manga. Now before we actually get to that, what people don't really get are the power levels in 7 Deadly Sins. How do they function? Are they the same power levels from Dragon Ball? They're not. I hate when people say this, and you probably hate it too, right? They're two completely different fictions, and their power system works completely differently. I have no idea why people think they're the same. Like, do you think Dragon Ball and, like, 7 Deadly Sins is written by the same person or something? You know what? I really hate to be the person that bursts your bubble, right? But they're not even referred to as power levels by the Viz translation. It's actually stated combat class. So it's a completely different thing. I have no idea what normies are actually talking about. Another misconception is that they think power levels are completely linear, because they're not. They're actually made up of magic, strength, and spirit. For example, if I had a combat class of 9,000, and somebody had a combat class of 4,500, would they hit twice as hard as me? Considering that their combat class is actually twice as high as mine. You'd think so, right? No. Because look at it this way, right? What if they're split? The split of magic, strength, and spirit was 3,000, 3,000, 3,000. That equaled 9,000, right? So his strength, let's say, was 3,000. But now, now the other person with the combat class of 4,500 had a split of 4,250, 250. So his other stats are really bad, but his strength is 4,000. Now that strength of 4,000 would be above the strength of 3,000. So even though that person's got half the power level, they're actually stronger physically in this regard. So they're not completely linear. It doesn't work like that. Okay, season one. How strong is Meliodas in season one? I'm not gonna do that Lord Twigo slaps the whole fucking series meme because it's not funny. Like I hate it when like Nux Takun and those bum boys bring that shit up. It's, it's not funny. I uh, know I'm not trying to be edgy. I'm not trying to like act cool and be like, oh, look, look how grown up I am or anything, right? I mean, if you're willing to pay me, I might do a Lord Twigo scale. But in all seriousness, like, Lord Twigo does get slapped by Meliodas. And Meliodas does this with a broken sword, which is pretty cool. They do destroy a hill, so maybe they're, like, hill level. Meliodas looks kind of suppressed, so he's probably way beyond that. I mean, it's not even super inconsistent or anything. We see, like, later on, like, he gets stronger throughout Season 1. He armrests was banned, and literally just their aura causes the entire castle to shake. Now, this ain't any small, ordinary castle. It's pretty big. Sure, it's not a mountain, but... Imagine they're just doing this from their presence alone. That's pretty insane. Now moving on to the topic of speed, how fast is Meliodas in Season 1? Well, we know he was actually able to dodge Gil Thunder's actual lightning. Now Gil Thunder uses electricity to amp his actual speed, so there'd be no reason to assume that he's not that fast. Okay, now just to note his power level at the end of Season 1 is like 4000. Now this is important, because going into Season 2, he has a higher power level. Season 2. He begins with a power level of 10,000. And with this power level, he actually gets bodied by one of the Ten Commandments in their base, Garland. And he's not even using Critical Over, he literally bodies Meliodas. Literally, when Garland uses Critical Over, we literally see him destroy mountains. With his concussive force, he literally swings and the air pressure created splits mountains. That's like some Madra stuff right there. And Garland actually has a power level of 40,000. And then Meliodas gets his power restored and he has a power level of 32,000. 
However, using the Demon Mark, he gets a power level of 56,000. So he should probably be beyond him, but like I said, the power level stuff isn't completely consistent, but it should be assumed he is actually above Garland, which would make sense, because later on we do see him actually fight Gloxenia, and Gloxenia's attacks literally dwarf mountains, and I think they actually count island level. So Gloxenia's AP and durability scale by the third law of thermodynamics, so he should be able to actually take the energy that he exerts, should be island level, and Meliodas destroys Gloxenia, meaning Meliodas is actually island level. Which makes sense because we have like people like Droll, who can actually cause earthquakes that shakes everything in a 40 mile radius. We know this because the castle in Leonis actually shakes, and I think this feat actually calculates to about island level, so it's all pretty consistent. Now Meliodas quite casually scales to all of this right, in his base, and then he applies the demon mark. Now with his demon mark applied, his power should be closer to the country level mark, because he was actually able to destroy all of Danafor pretty casually in the past. And now Danafor is considered a country. Mid-season he goes on to fight the Ten Commandments, well at least most of them. And we all know how that goes, he's getting bodied until he uses the revenge counter. Now the revenge counter doesn't work exactly like the fall counter does. It's actually better. It's because it takes both physical and magic attacks, and it can reflect it twice as strong. So what happens is all the damage he takes from the Ten Commandments, or however many of them there are there, right? He takes all of that, absorbs it, and then reflects all of it. So they combined force, all that combined energy, he reflects right back at them, by twofold. Maybe his normal stats don't scale to whatever that would be, maybe like large island level, possibly small country level, but he should be able to fight somebody who is that level. Now, it's actually a two times reflection. Even if we're being generous and we say it's a three times reflection, because apparently in the novels it stated that it reflects by several times, and several at least mean three times, even assuming they're slightly above Meliodas, Meliodas actually wouldn't be able to kill them with an attack three times stronger than them. Because you need to be seven times stronger than somebody to one shot them. So they would probably tank it. So it's not as useful as people make it out to be. Though he does actually have the ability to create clones weaker than himself. So it's not crazy impressive, but they can actually all use full counter. And each of the full counters, they kind of reflect off each other, right? They stack. So it's pretty insane that way. Post revival, well, he can't really die. We figure out he's fucking immortal, which is insane. But once he comes back, he's actually even stronger because he begins to actually revert into his more like demonic state, hence he's more like cruel, and he actually goes on to one shot, Fraudrin. Now Fraudrin is actually comparable to the other commandments who are like island level, possibly slightly higher. Now one shotting somebody, right, essentially puts you about 7.5 times stronger than them. So 7.5 times stronger than this island level feat that the Ten Commandments are doing, right? Taking Droll as like a baseline example, for reference, he can produce 23 gigatons times 7.5 is roughly around 172 gigatons of TNT. Now, what does this equate to? Well, it equates to large island level, which does actually make sense. You could actually get it to small country level if you use higher end calcs. Regardless, by the end of season two, we're not really sure how fast he is. I can't like put an actual number on it. Just that he's a lot faster than the speed of lightning at this point. He can actually blitz some of the Ten Commandments who should already be much faster than the speed of lightning. So him being sub relativistic at this point is actually downplay. Regardless, moving on to season 3, he should be stronger than some of the Archangels like Sariel and Tamriel. And we know that they're capable of creating dimensions together that can be entirely flooded. Even if you assume it's like as far as the eye can see, it's usually calc around large country level. For this calc, I'm actually lowballing. Low end calc actually gets you 731 teratons, which is high country level. If you use a mid end or the high end, it actually gets you continental, possibly even higher. Okay, the feat of them creating the dimension was done together when they combined both of their graces, and it's called the Domain of God. However, the actual flooding feat was done individually by Tamriel and his grace, so this feat is entirely his and it would put him at least at large country level. Now they easily get one shot by an assault mode Esterosa. Now if you're capable of one shotting somebody right, it depends on the circumstances. Are you knocking them out because you're hitting their weak spot? If that's not a case and you can physically just knock them out literally anywhere on their body, it's have a difference between an athlete and a street level character, which makes sense. Now if we apply that multiplier to Esterosa, this would actually put him at 1.3 petatons, which is about high continent level. Assault mode Meliodas should actually be relative to this Esterosa, if not above him. Since the whole point of like Esterosa is to like surpass him or reach his level. And plus we know Meliodas actually fought the one, Eskinal, who should actually be an even bigger deal in the next season. Now we're moving more into season 4 and manga territory, right? We know that Mayal is actually capable of one-shotting the original demon. 
is actually a fusion between Kusak and Chandler. Now, as the original demon, they should actually be beyond somebody like Ludricel and scaling beyond his actual brothers. He should obviously be beyond Tamriel, who's large country level. And then Mayal comes in and literally one shots the original demon, which all actually consistently makes sense because he shouldn't actually be weaker than he was as Esterosa. So he's still continent level. Now, Meliodas should actually be relative to these kind of characters, right? Like the one, because he's literally fought the one in the assault mode. Now, in speed, we know they should actually be beyond Ludricel. Whose grace is actually light based. I can't even make this up, but Zeldris actually reacts to it. And Ludricel literally says verbatim that he's faster than his grace and it's like he's moving faster than the speed of light. But then literally says that's not even an exaggeration or hyperbole. He's actually being literal. So these characters should actually be light speed. Okay, now moving on to ladder scaling. We're actually going to be talking about Demon King Meliodas now. Now that I've established Mayal is actually continent level, right? He should actually scale to all of the other 7 deadly sins because he's roughly around the same level as them and performs just as well as them against Demon King Meliodas. Even if you lowball and save their relative, it doesn't actually matter because the Demon King Meliodas literally flicks away the 7 deadly sins like they're nothing. So now these continent level characters like King, who can actually produce 1.3 petatons of energy, literally cannot do anything to this Demon King Meliodas. So he should actually be in the one shot range difference between them. Now if you actually multiply this by 7.5 times again right so this is a one shot meter you don't even need to use this you'll see where the scaling is going to go and i'm actually going to bring up feats later on this would actually put demon king meliodas at 9.7 patterns which is multi-continental at this point Ban post purgatory training is the only one who can actually combat this demon king Meliodas, right? So that means he actually scales to him. And once the demon king actually takes over Zeldris' body, and then demon king Zeldris comes about, then literally base Meliodas and base Ban, who fought demon king Meliodas, are literally equal. Now, them being multi continental at this point isn't actually inconsistent. Meliodas literally stated that the demon king's power is a danger to the entire planet. So it actually makes sense for them to be able to affect the entire world, which is actually low balled multi continental, right? And it makes sense because literally the demon king's presence presence was affecting the world too. Ban actually starts to become more irrelevant in the fight against Demon King Zeldris, right? Once he activates his Demon Mark. However, Escanor can also fight him using the one. And Demon Mark Meliodas can actually fight Demon King Demon Mark Zeldris, who ironically has got even stronger and kind of evolved and looks slightly more buff. Obviously, I don't actually know the increase for the Demon Mark. It's kind of implied to be a massive increase in like season one, but then it's not a big of an increase as like it is later on. So it might be like some sort of addition. Escanor then uses the one ultimate to fight him. And literally an even stronger Demon King, Demon Mark Zeldris, can literally do no damage to him. So the difference between them is at least 7.5 times again, and it's like a one-shot level difference, because he can't even hurt him. So if we were assuming that they were multi-continental before, right? So these multi-continental characters could produce about 9.7 petatons of energy, which is multi-continental, times that by 7.5 is 72.7 petatons, which is still multi-continental. But bear with me. The Demon King actually ends up possessing all of Britannia and gets his massive amp, hence is a lot stronger and near its full power. Because Assault Mode Meliodas is now relative to this Escanor, so it should also be this level. Now all of the 7 Deadly Sins do a combined attack, right? And then this attack gets 4 counted about 4 times, and everybody knows what 4 counter does. Multiplying it by 2 each time to actually take out the Demon King. So it's essentially Assault Mode Meliodas, who is 72.7 petatons, plus Escanor, who is the same, plus Ban, who is 9.7 petatons, plus, let's say the other 4 members being 1.3 petatons, which King was, which is actually a low ball. All of this actually equates to 160.3 petatons which is still multi-continental, but we haven't actually multiplied them by the four counters yet. Okay, so he does it four times and each of them stack on top of each other. So all of this actually equates to about 2.5 exatons of TNT, which is still really high-end multi-continental now. However, we're not really sure how strong a prime Demon King is because he kind of implies that like he was a lot stronger when he was younger in his prime. And I'm actually going to talk about some of his prime feats, though you could arguably say that he was reaching his prime power in the forms prior. Okay, now this is when the scaling starts to pick up really quickly. The Demon King himself is actually stated to be capable of actually creating his demon world. Now we know that his demon world is an actual planet, because it's referred to as a world. And we know a lot of these worlds that have been created actually have shown to have curvature, so they're actual planets. And I want you guys to actually think about it, right? Earth in 7 Deadly Sins is actually based off our own planet. It would only be a base assumption or axiomatic to assume it is like a planet. Think about it. Britannia is actually based off Britain in real life. So Earth in Seven Deadly Sins is actually referred to as the world, which is the same exact thing that the Supreme Deity and the Demon King's realms are called. They're called worlds, essentially, and worlds do actually mean planets. They can actually translate to that. For all the people who are going to be like, um, but Mr. Bullet, they're actually creating societies, they're not actually worlds. Read the actual scan. It says they're made from nothing. Where do you think these societies are going to exist on? Nothingness? There needs to be physical actual land for them to exist on. Therefore, they're actually creating worlds. 
physical matter from nothing. So I'm not even making this up, the scan actually differentiates them. It says first they create the world, then they create all the people that lived on it. So they're factually talking about planets. You could actually assume they mean universes, but that actually doesn't make sense in the context, considering they consider Earth a world. Now are they referring to the entire dimension? No. And the reason I say this is because the term world is used. Dimensional space actually isn't used. Also, even if you assume they somehow were, which is literally impossible anyways, but even if you did right, people assume there's light in it, so therefore it has a sun or something. Well, there's actually no proof they actually have stars or anything, right? Sure, they have light, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily natural light. It's a really common trope in fiction for this to be the case, where people actually create dimensions or like pocket spaces that have light in it already without a natural light source. So it's probably like artificial. And by the way, I'm not saying that the real world doesn't have stars in it and stuff, right? Because it's actually stated that the cosmos actually existed before them. Even Chaos was actually born in the universe, right? He doesn't predate the universe or anything, right? So the universe all existed already, right? But then like this guy, Chaos, actually created Earth, the Demon King and a Supreme Deity, who in return created their own planets. That is literally the only interpretation. So they're just making planets. I'll give you an example, right? We know it's actually stated that the Karma Wii Dimension was created by the user, right? Yet it still has light, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's natural light and it doesn't mean the Karma Wii Dimension has a star in it. And people do actually say that my Al can actually use his ability, Sunshine, in the other realms, right? However, the problem with this is, we've seen Eskonor do it when he stored the actual sunlight in his actual axe, and we've seen Mayal do it when he actually literally is covered by darkness, and we've also seen multiple times when these users of Sunshine are actually covered in darkness, they can still use their powers. So you don't actually need natural sunlight to actually use these powers, so we don't actually know if stars exist in the two worlds literally created by the Demon King and the Supreme Deity, which are just worlds anyways, so it doesn't even matter, because they're not actually dimensions. Okay, now that we know that the full power Demon King can actually create planets, he generates that much energy, right? Okay, now Meliodas doesn't actually scale to that. We know this, right? He literally had to use the combined force of all of his seven deadly sins, use full counter multiple times to multiply his power via multiple times just to actually take him out. However, Meliodas gets a new form, and Zeldris actually states that this form is actually the same level, if not stronger, than the Demon King. However, <laughs> it's literally stated that Meliodas in his final form surpassed the Demon King entirely, so in power he should easily be relative to him anyways. Okay, now moving on to an even more powerful opponent, Chaos. Now Chaos is actually the being that created Earth, that actually created the Demon King and the Supreme Deity, and required the teamwork of both of them to actually seal away Chaos. So Chaos should naturally actually scale beyond them, and even when Kath kind of transforms into Chaos, right, by taking some of like Arthur's like power, even partially, right, was actually capable of creating a world which actually has his own curvature, which is literally another planet level feat again. And now you're wondering, how do all of these planet level creation feats scale to potency, right? That's probably what you're wondering. If you're able to create something really quickly, like Chaos did in this case, right, then you actually have to produce that same amount of energy. And if anything, right, creation takes more energy than destruction. And if you can generate this much energy, right, you should be able to resist the counterforce. It's only natural, I mean your durability relates to that too, so anybody who can harm you, they scale to it, and that's when Meliodas comes into this. He should actually scale to characters like King Arthur, and Arthur actually has Chaos's full power. How strong is Meliodas? Should at least be planet level, and should at least be light speed at this point. If not faster than the speed of light a few times, because in all honesty right, he should actually easily be able to blitz somebody like Zeldris even back when he was doing light speed feats. Okay now I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't worry the Naruto video is coming. It's just gonna take time to make and also we kind of do have to wait for new Boruto Traptor to drop so there's still quite a while left until that comes out. But if you want to see it, sub down below. If you want to see other videos, like, just comment down below what you want to see. Do you know what would actually really help me? If you actually share this video with people who don't think he's planetary, ironically, and actually educate those normies so the community actually know how strong Meliodas is at this point, you'll be surprised how much lowball he actually gets. Even though the actual ability of full counter is actually really wanked. I'm glad you actually made it to the end of the video. Thank you for watching it and I'll hope to see you next time. Thanks, peace out. On God, I actually love all my subs.